Your password strategy sucks. We're going to show you how to make it better today on Lab Rats. This episode of Lab Rats is brought to you by Netflix. Hello and welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And this is a show where we demystify technology, gadgets, the internet, and today, uh, we're going to be looking at uh, something in the news. Something in the news, yeah. Our friends at LinkedIn, who you think of as being a very professional, safe, secure, conservative kind of place, they got hacked. All of the passwords of all the users out there, including you and me, got out there. So, yeah, they're, they're out there in a hashed format, which means that they were encrypted, but that's still possible to get the passwords back out with a little bit of work. Right. So, so it's not safe out there for anybody if you're, uh, if you're doing passwords. And of course, passwords are an integral part of the internet these days. So today we're going to show you some strategies on how to minimize your risk, how to write the best password ever, uh, and uh, also some utilities that will help you kind of manage the whole password process. Because of course, you have zillions, I have zillions, you probably have 10 times the number of those as well. I've got zillions and zillions, yeah. All right. Well, this episode is brought to you by Netflix. Netflix streams TV shows and movies directly to your home, saving you time, money, and hassle. As a Netflix Unlimited member, you can instantly watch TV episodes and movies streaming directly to your PC, Mac, or right to your TV with your Xbox 360, PS3, or Nintendo Wii console. Watch as many movies as you want, anytime you want, and cancel anytime. For a limited time, get a free 30-day trial of Netflix. Visit netflix.com slash labrats and sign up now. All right. Uh, you're going to need a password at Netflix. So we better uh, yes. show them how to write a great password. Yeah, so ba basically, your, your password strategy sucks. I said that off the top and I'll say it again. Everyone has a really lousy password for the most part. There, there's some people that are very good. Our friend Steve Gibson comes to mind who uh, writes passwords that are like 64 characters of gibberish and he probably remembers them all in his head. Um, but for the most part, people choose really bad passwords and that like, is the weak link. So sex123 is bad? Sex123 is bad, password is bad, and that's, that's bad. yeah, there's, there's a list of the top uh, 10 worst passwords yeah. that are out there. People see uh, these things coming out and they see all of these really lousy ones like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Bad, very bad, because <laughs> most of these are easy to guess. People choose their, their spouse's name, they choose their pet's name, they choose a birth date. Um, Bad, very bad. Yeah. You and, don't want to and, use this. The other thing is, you know, so you may think, oh, I've got a really cool strategy. If you have a word that's in the dictionary, bad. Bad. If you have a combination of words that are in the dictionary, bad. Bad. So uh, it's really hard, actually, these days to actually create a secure password. And then people like LinkedIn, and, you know, there are a bunch of others that we will name nameless, but you could probably look them up on the internet, have lost your passwords too. Hackers are smart people and companies are losing or being hacked all the time. So the reality is, is you need a start smart strategy and even then you're gonna be compromised. Why? Yeah, so with LinkedIn, I mean, the, the reason we, we talked about this, if you have a bad password to start with, even if you think it's secure and you don't tell anybody, the easier your password is to guess. Like if you put password, if they brute force it, then they'll get your password out fairly quickly. And then... Well, let's start with that. So we said brute force. Brute force, Basic, basically they, they take the, the encrypted version and sort of, throw encryption at it really uh, over actually, and over and over again in different variations, tiny little variations until it unlocks. Right, exactly. Um, so if you have a bad password, it'll be much easier to do that. And then they can take that password and your username because they'll have that too at that point and start trying it at other sites like Amazon or your bank or other places. So right. if you have a bad password strategy there, it'll come back to bite you somewhere else when someone else gets hacked. That's right. So. Well, let's start with some fundamentals. Mm -hmm. Okay, so minimum length of a password. Uh, minimum length of a password, they, they sort of recommend eight as the minimum. So you don't want to go any shorter than that. Right. Um, it's better to go even longer. I said Steve Gibson probably does 64. You probably don't want to do 64 because that's a, a pain to remember. Yeah. Uh, okay. If you have to remember it off the top of your head. And then the password should contain? The password should, okay. Now, well, it now shouldn't contain depending on it what shouldn't, you It shouldn't just contain plain text. Yeah. Um, we're, we're getting into some IT security policy rules here. So yeah. they, they generally recommend uh, uppercase and lowercase letters. They recommend having a number in there and they recommend having some bit of punctuation in there. Right. So back in the early days, you, it would have to be plain text, but these days you can have pretty much all the things that are in there except for like an enter. 
because enter is what tells them you're done. You're done, yeah. Right. So, so my name, my mother calls me Andrew. Mm -hmm. So capital A on, on Andrew. Well, of course, it's my name, so it's kind of already yeah, this is, is bad. Yeah, this is already bad. <laughs> but maybe, uh, you know, uh, my the foreign name is in, in Andre, right? So you, it's capital A, 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 lowercase n-d-r-e, okay? So you could choose that. Pretty weak, though. It's pretty weak because right. it's, it's reasonably easy to guess. Right. And uh, if people know your nicknames, then they could guess that, for example. If you use your pet's names, they'll guess that. Right. And uh, just changing a letter. Here, here's one thing that uh, some people like to do is they use the lead speak. So they replace uh, uh, O's with zeros yep. or A's with fours. Yep. And again, that's, with threes. Yeah, that's, that's getting increasingly easy to guess too because it's a known thing out there. So you probably want to avoid doing that too. So. Well, and bear in mind too, right? This is not some 15 year old sitting in the basement in Romania typing it over again. They are throwing computer power at, yep. your, at the hash. Again and yeah, again, yeah. You know, they're, multiple times a minute, right? So they're, they're trying to crack it and crack it. It's like yeah. they're knocking it again and again, very, very fast. Yeah, thousands and thousands of time every minute. Right. So, 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 just so. First of all, uppercase, some lowercase. You can throw a number in there. You could use this. What you call leet speak, right? Which mm -hmm. is like replacing letters with numbers and that sort of thing. But again, relatively easy to remember. Yeah. Uh, you can put punctuation in there somewhere. Mm -hmm. That also improves the, or de decreases the likelihood it will get. Yeah, right. if you have to use a word, put the punctuation in the middle of the word somewhere. Right. Um, the best strategy is to have complete gibberish combination of all of these things. Right. So uppercase, lowercase, mm -hmm. no dictionary word, no part of a dictionary word, a punctuation at random, mm -hmm. right? And then eight characters, and probably the more characters, yeah. the harder it is to crack. Yeah, every time you add a character to it, you increase the strength exponentially. So it's better to go 10, 12, 14, 16. Um, now, there's, there's a little bit of um, uh, controversy about this eight character thing and, the, and the, the password policies that force you to do that. So when you're at a company and they make you choose that kind of a password to fit that kind of a policy, there's, there's a bit of... Uh, controversy that that's actually making things more insecure because they, people are now starting to write things down or they're starting to use the same one everywhere they go because it's so hard to remember that kind of a password and they don't want to have to juggle 10 or 12 of them so they're always using exactly the same one which again allows you to be compromised because if you use it at your bank they can use it at Amazon or vice versa and just is bad. Right, so you should take all of that advice and take pieces of it to just improve your situation yeah. And you should be creating gibberish. Now, there are software versions, mm -hmm. products that will generate these things. And this is what yeah. you're going to show us next. Right? Yeah, so you use this early strategy of picking out these things yourself if, if you absolutely have to. And if you can only remember so many things in your mind, like choose at least four or five variations, right? right. Um, don't just use one. Right. Um, so you can change the punctuation, change the number, change the punctuation, change the sequence, yeah. sequence, that sort of thing. Yeah. Easy to remember but randomly use them A on bit harder sites. to guess, right. And the good thing about that too is that look, you say, oh, what's my password? I can't remember. Of course, it's going to be a variation of something. You could sit there and try it three or four times before it times out and says, yeah. I'm sorry, you're locked out of your account. Right. So a better way to do this is using some sort of a password manager. So there, there's uh, something built into Mac called uh, your keychain. Um, but one thing you can do is add an external third-party solution. Now, there's one that uh, we have... Uh, talked about uh, in, 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 in the past, there, there's something called LastPass. And it's a, a browser-based solution. So you can use it from wherever you are as long as you log in. They keep part of the, your, your keys, your passwords, on their server. And the other half is unlocked by your password on here. So um, you add that in. You can enter it in on any browser. If you've logged in from here or from work or whatever, it'll keep track of that wherever you are or on your smartphone. Um, I find it to be a bit naggy, though. So it, uh, it will just sort of naggy. every time, naggy, every time you're on a site and you've got the browser extension enabled, so you download it and it will go in as an extension on your browser. Yeah. Every time you're on a site and it sees a password, it will say, hey, do you want to do this? You want to add this password in? Come on, come on, let's add a password into this. And you may have already added it in already a, a couple of times and yeah. told it to go away a few times, but it's still like, <laughs> let me help you out. Come on, I want to help you. So it's the internet version of a border collie. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I find it a little bit irritating. A lot of companies do use this, so it is very powerful. Yep. Now, you asked me a question beforehand. Mm -hmm. What happens if LastPass is compromised? Yeah. And it, it uses uh, a version of encryption that 
it only stores part of the equation and you have the other part on your end. So even if someone hacks into LastPass, they'll have a bunch of useful stuff over at that end. Right. And we're going to talk more about encryption and how exactly that works in an upcoming episode. Okay. So what I prefer instead of LastPass, and yeah. you can use LastPass. It's, it's there and there's a free version and there's a premium version for a dollar a month if you want to spend a little bit more and get a few extra features. Yeah. Little tip, free version of a password keeper, probably a bad idea. <laughs> Maybe. So what I prefer, and I believe you do as well, is something from Agile Bits called 1Password. Yeah. Now this, I think, got its start on the Mac, but it is available for Windows. LastPass is available for Mac, Windows, and Linux. Yeah. Uh, 1Password, only Mac and Windows. And what the, this one does is it creates a key file. So it actually stores it in a little ball on your system. Yeah. And uh, stores it all in there. Again, it's encrypted, so you don't have to, to worry about uh, you know, someone just grabbing the file and running away with all your passwords, they still need to know the unlocking mechanism to get at it. Right. And every time you use it, you have to actually enter a password, and I'll show you that in a bit. Don't lose that password. Don't lose that password. Now, all, both of these solutions uh, allow you to... Uh, and don't make that password sex123. And don't make that password <laughs> bad. So if you make that password bad, all of this is for naught. So now when you log into this uh, for the first time, yeah. uh, it, it asks you to put in a good master password. So yeah. choose a really good one. Choose yeah. one that meet all of these standards. My, mine is something like 20 characters long and it's got, is it? Um, it is Annie's big wiener and shouldn't have asked me that. <laughs> One, two, three. So okay. uh, I'm gonna type it in here and uh, then really hit is. unlock. It, it's, it's a long one, but this is the, the trick. Yeah. Now you only have to remember one really good password. Yeah, yeah. And once you've remembered that, all of your other machines can be unlocked by it um, because you can get access to your passwords here. Right. So you can see along the side, I've got a whole pile of things. But to add one in, so you've got a new site that you want to go to, you're going to press the plus. It'll get you started at the top. It's login, so you're going to type the site. We're going to type uh, labrats.tv. And then on, underneath, it has uh, the, the URL. So again, I'm going to type labrats.tv. So if, you, if you're at like YouTube, you would type youtube.here. And this is just so it knows what site you're on and what, uh, what password it's going to use for that. Sure. So labrats.tv, you're going to enter your username, and that's going to be Sean. My password is going to be, I can type it in here, but here's the key here. You can hit generate, and it'll create uh, one for you, and it'll uh, give you the ability to do like 50 characters long. And, and look at this right up here. Look at this. Can you, will you ever remember that? You Led won't. K v k q k no. See, that's what a good password looks like, and nobody's going to remember that, and nobody's going to use that without some sort of... Um, security um, password keeper like this. Now that you have it, you can use passwords like this and you'll be so secure you'll never get your accounts hacked even if some little dingbat uh, out of wherever grabs the key file from LinkedIn or from YouTube or from your bank. Right. So you can see it says random here. You can change it to pronounceable and it'll give you this long string right here. This is still more secure than the, the general options. Uh, Google rum dev c uh, Diane yeah. Ack. Yeah, you have a better you have a better chance of remembering this. Yeah, but fair enough. anyways, you can you can shrink it down to oh, like it. whatever. So change change whatever you want. That's handy. Yeah, and then and then save it. Now it's going to remember that for you. You don't even have to remember it. You right. just copy and paste it whenever you get to that site, right, right, right. or use the little uh, the link on the browser that will automatically fill in. Those so when fields. you install this, it's going to put a little utility in your browser mm -hmm. that says, "Hey." What is the password on this page when you go to that page? Yeah, and you click it and it'll autofill it if you're on the right uh, page. Right. So there you go. Okay. Um, so, so that'll save this, all of them. This costs how much? It costs, uh, I believe, $29.99 for a single, no, it's $49.99 for a single version. Yeah. It's $69.99 for a family pack, which allows you five licenses for all the different people in your family. Right. Um, it and works you on can, Mac? It works on Mac or Windows. Windows. If you want to do both, it's $69.99. That'll give you a license. It'll allow you to share your key file on two different machines right. uh, over platforms. And then $99.99 will allow you to do that on different. And what about mobile? Or, or, sorry, family pack. And then you can use it on mobile as well. Now, here's, here's one of the key things about 1Password that I absolutely love is it integrates with Dropbox. And we've talked about Dropbox before. Yeah. So you have the ability when you're setting up this to save your key file into your Dropbox. And then when you set up one password on any of your other machines, including another Mac, another Windows machine, or on your mobile devices here, it'll say, do you want to do this here, or do you want to, or do you want to like, grab a key file from elsewhere, from your card, or from your hard drive, or do you just want to look for it in Dropbox? Mm. Click it, point it to Dropbox, authenticate Dropbox, and bang, all your passwords are there. 
Very cool. And, uh, and then the other thing along the side you'll notice here, it saves your accounts, identities, software. I'm not going to click on this because it Reveal actually, all your yeah, it keeps all of your software keys. So for example, you've got like an Adobe product, you've got um, 1Password that has, comes with an authentication key. key, whatever it is. Yeah, Windows yeah. 7, all of these things that you have to save, you can store in this thing. So if you have a crash, then you just grab the entire thing back out of Dropbox after you reinstall and then start reinstalling your software. Very good. All right. Thanks, John. Okay. All right. Well, that's it for Labras this week. Uh, if you have a question, if you would like us to cover a topic, you're like, so we've got a burning question. If you'd like to send us your passwords, I mean, uh, if you'd like to, you know, whatever it is that you is on your mind, you want to send us a message, you can email us at. Sex123 is a horrible, horrible password. And you should never use it because it's very terrible. Maybe you should use 123-5 at labras.tv. There you go. Oh. I have no or, clue where that uh, particular um, email address will go because of all the uh, punctuation and stuff in the show. It'll probably break our inbox. It probably will. Yeah, okay. But more simply, you could use feedback at labrass.tv. Oh, much easier. Yeah. Don't use that as your password, though. No. All right. Well, thank you for tuning in this week and pushing play. You know, it would be foolish for us to be here explaining the passwords. If you were now there using sex123 or password, <laughs> don't use password. <laughs> all right. My name is Andy Walker. I'm John Carruthers. And we'll see you next time. Are you?